All right, so the next we have to talk about golf. Golf, a walk spoiled by a stupid white ball. <laughs> anyway, so um, while I was at Americade this weekend, I played top of the world golf course, which is in Lake George. It's actually just sort of southeast of Lake George by Queensbury, New York. It is a ways from DC, but let me tell you something right now. I had a blast playing this course. Now, it's only got one review on Golf Now, but I was able to go on Golf Now and get a hot deal for this course after I got through the demo rides at Americade at 215 for $16. I went out and played the course. There was one other guy on the course the entire time. I only heard possibly the slight whir of a lawnmower near the uh, greenskeeper shack. And I heard one small plane fly somewhere near the course, off in the distance. I heard a couple of jets pass over at 35,000 feet. And that's it. Almost no cars. I heard the entire time. No traffic. There are almost no houses whatsoever near the course except for the clubhouse, which is also B&B. And um, also, there's an activities center um, near the near the tenth fairway, uh, which is a par three, and that is like off on a slight hill overlooking the the um, the tenth hole. There were no other houses within miles of this course, except down the hill, you know, on the road up to the course. Um, Great views, as you can see from the clubhouse. You know, you can look way out to God knows, I don't know, it was Rutland or, or something, Montpelier, way off in the distance over the valleys and so forth. And um, very quiet. Now, the Golf Now review basically said that the course was a um, pasture, <laughs> uh, that the, the fairways were long and uncut and so forth. And I didn't find this to be true. It was an interesting... Um, thing. Now, I'm not going to say that it couldn't have used cart pass, but at the same time, there is an argument against cart pass in that they give you something to bounce off if your ball is slightly off the fairway. And I'm sure that if you've played enough golf, you know what it's like to have a shot hit the cart path and go bouncing, you know, another 25 yards off into the weeds. And this isn't a problem on this course because it really doesn't have... Um, paved cart pass, and even the little cart pass stubs it has are, are either gravel or just dirt. It's a, it's a walker's course. Now, I'm not going to say that it was a great course to drive on. It, it wasn't. Um, but it wasn't like it, it was a big problem either. You know, I certainly was happier to drive it than I would have been to walk it. And even though it's 6,000 yards from the back tees, there, it does have a 590 par 5 and a five, a 490 par 5 and a bunch of, you know, decent length par 4s. Obviously, some of the par 4s are short. There was, you know, a 305 par 4 and some other things like that. Um, but the par 3s were decently long, somewhere between 180, you know, from the back tees to 150 from the back tees. And it was a challenging course. I, I, I didn't bring my scorecard in um, with me. Now, so I'm not going to add it in here, but I shot a 104 in the course. I had a 100 up until the last hole, and then I parked two balls off the tee into the grass, which was my nemesis on, like, the 11th hole also. There's a, a patch of grass that's about knee high between the 18th and the um, 11th fairways, and I lost a ball in it on the 11th, and I lost two balls in it on the 18th, and that pushed my score up to... Um, 104. Uh, I didn't buy a one putt the entire time. I two putted every freaking hole. It was starting. <laughs> I was like, man, what's going on here? The greens were in decent condition, a little bit long, a little bit shaggy, but still almost all of them were in decent condition. They were a little soft and spongy, like bouncy, spongy, um, not the thuddy, dud, you know, spongy. They were, you know, like you step on, you could feel them give and come back up and they had a decent amount of play on them there was a, a fair amount of slope on them and they, they had a decent speed on them not great not spectacular but you know decent speed and they had a lot of breaks so it was hard to actually 
play, you know, lag putts and drop them because it was either you're going to lag the putt or the putt was going to run off if you missed it. You know, it was going to run off another five or six feet. And I, I usually try to play lag putts. So this time, I I didn't get any one putts, but I did get um, all two putts. So it was good for that. And my my score was high because I had trouble getting on the greens in regulation. I fully admit um, the course had some intimidating shots that I blew. It had some um, uphills and downhills and stuff that I, I did okay on, but I was cons- I was pretty consistently about two strokes over par on every hole. Some some holes I was uh, you know, bogey. So I think I, I didn't par a single hole. And... Um, there were a couple of shots that I, I had was plus three or something like that. And obviously the 18th, I was, um, I got a seven on a par three. So that was plus five right there for a one Oh four and on a par 71. So, um, all I can say is the course was a challenge enough as it was from the back tees, despite the fact that it was only 6,000 yards from the back tees and it was a slope 117 course from the back tees it was plenty of a challenge plenty intriguing tight enough in certain spots lots of downhill in other spots certainly you know i blew a couple of shots that had me kicking myself you know had shades of general's ridge had um shades of of twin lakes you know all these all these things i think it was um a very good course, and at sixteen dollars, it was a dynamic outing. Just wonderful. Really nice clubhouse. Had a nice bar inside. Nice clubhouse. Nice. You know, the, the girl um, waitress there was really nice. Um, just a great feel. You know, I, I couldn't have complained about that course at all. Seriously, there was. Really, nothing about it that was um, that was bad, in my opinion. The views were spectacular. It was not that hard to get to from Lake George. Uh, it was not I had to drive a hundred thousand miles, and it certainly was not like this other course that I drove by and saw there. That was one hundred and twenty dollars to play around. One hundred and twenty freaking dollars they wanted to play a course that likewise did not have cart pass, and likewise was um, a vertical course in some ways, but nothing impressive, nothing really great. It was just expensive as shit. It was like this one part of the town, one part of 9L, where they basically had like a bunch of rich people come in and say, okay, we're going to pay five times for everything that you pay in Lake George. We're just going to pay five times, drive up the price, make it semi-exclusive, give it that exclusive air and and make everything seem like it's, you know, you know, um, Montauk or something. But it's basically just the same crap that you'd see anywhere else along the entirety of Lake Georgia, the rivers that run up to Lake Georgia, whatever. But we'll call it, you know, Bolton or whatever it was called. It was it was nonsense. Nonsense. Simply elitist nonsense. That course was in no way, shape, or form worth I mean, just no way in hell it was worth $120 to play it. I thought about paying it. I said, well, maybe I'll, and I said, and something just said, nah, something, something just slapped me upside down. I said, nah, I'm not paying $120 to play golf in this course. Nah, it's not going to happen. So I drove around and looked around and all this kind of stuff and finally found this other course. I mean, it was, it was just, it was just something I saw on golf now when I was sitting in a hotel and I said, eh, this guy is, this one review of this course, this guy is crapping all over this course. Stay away from this dog pile. You know, it's it's in there now. I didn't I didn't add to it. But um the one picture that was in there was decent and he said, Well, it had great views going to the course. It's just, you know, we were stuck for an hour and a half behind a six plane in front of us and all and it's and yeah, I can see that. And, and, and yeah, you shouldn't be stuck behind a group of six for an hour and a half. Go past them. You know, they don't want to let you pass them. You pass them by skipping the hole and then you come back later and play another hole or something like that. you know if you really are being held up by the group in front of you sacrifice a hole and get past them 
Okay, it's not worth it to be aggravated behind him the entire round. So I didn't trust this guy's judgment about the course, and I went out and checked it out for myself. And you know, the drive up there wasn't all that impressive because you can't see anything because of all the trees on the way up. But when you get to the top, you're above a fair amount of the trees, and you can see very well. So I would definitely recommend this course. There's, I'm not saying that this course is worth going to Lake George to play, but certainly if you're in the Lake George area, it's worth a stop to play it. No question, it is a good course. Even at the $40 regular price, it's a good course. And at a, at they had a hot deal every day I was up there. At a hot deal price, unbelievable. Unbelievable. It, a must do <laughs> if you're a golfer to play this course for 16 bucks. That's top of the world golf course. I give it a solid B. I, I don't know if I give it a B plus or anything. The views were spectacular in a sense, if you like mountain views, okay? Um, there was some water in the course. There were some, you know, greens on the edges of, um, of uh, um, ponds and stuff like that. There were a number of ponds. No really long carries, nothing really spectacular in terms of carries. Some tight, you know, fairways, some open fairways, some some tricky dog legs. You know, not an outrageously difficult course, but still not a gimme course. Not something you're just going to walk out there and tear it up and, you know, and just fall asleep playing it. A fun course to play, definitely worth the experience. Top of the world golf course, B course, 117, Lake George, New York.